Welcome to this 18th video of building a social network with Go. Sadly, there is no more Go. We are going to move to the front end now. There is a thing with JSON and JavaScript, and it's that it doesn't support 64 bit integers out of the box. Check this out. Numbers on JavaScript have a limit. You can use big ints, but there is a quirk. So I made this library to parse JSON with BigInt support. Let's download and save it. I will also use this router that I made. OK, let's get into it. All the rendering will be done with JavaScript so this is pretty much the index.html. I will start by creating the router. You just need to attach a function to run for a given path. And whatever that function returns will be this result. I will render it inside the main element. That is it. Now I'm using a regular expression to catch any path. So this is the not found page. See? But I want these pages on its own file. This time I will use real DOM instead of a string. Now I just need to import this file. I will use a dynamic import for that. Now it returns a promise, so we need to handle it. Just add an await here. If it is a string, we set it as inner HTML, but if it's DOM, we append it as child. Here it is. This logic can be abstracted into a function. Now it looks more clear. I will also move the not found page into its own file. Now we don't need these ifs. I will also clear the current content before the await. And that is how the router works. Let's get into the login page. I will show a form to log in with the user email. This is for the development login we made.
And I will intercept the submit event of the form to do the login. I will make a new file in which we will do the HTTP requests. Remember that we need to add the auth token to the request headers. So, before that. I will make the auth module. This function gets the auth user from local storage. But it also checks for the token and expiration date of it. I will show you this little trick to give you type definitions in JavaScript. Who need TypeScript? Simply write JS docs and an empty export. Now you can import those definitions. OK, now we can use this function to set the authorization header. I will also use our custom JSON parsing with big int support. I will give the errors a name using the text body. I will transform it to title case and append error at the end. That's it. Let me quickly make a utilities module. So, if there is a JSON body, I will stringify it and set the corresponding content type.
That should be. Now we can continue with the login. For now, I will just log the error and display an alert. Let's add JS docs to this function. After login, we save the response to local storage. And finally, we reload the page. That's it. Now, I want to show this login page at the same path as the home page. So I will show one or the other depending on the auth state. This function will do that. Oh, let me clear the storage. I sure have some things save on localhost. Did you see that? That was pretty fast, but the login works. Let's add a logout button at the header. To log out I will just clear local storage and do a page reload. Nice. I feel like writing some CSS before finishing this video. I want to go with a dark theme. Pitch black. Maybe some rounded corners. It lacks contrast. Good thing that Chrome comes with a color ratio thing in the DevTools.
There it is. Above seven is a good contrast. Well, I won't bug you with me writing CSS. Let's end it there. See you in the next video.